everyone, so before we begin with our video, we would like to make a small request. Kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video if it helps you and also share it with your friends who may benefit from the same. Hey guys, so in this video we'll be showing how to simulate a battery charger. Um, how do you charge a battery using solar MPPT and a buck converter? I'm Sankarshan Dugga Prasad and uh, we'll begin. So this is the overview of the circuit. You have a PV panel and then you have a capacitor in pa parallel with the PV panel like in most PV circuits. Then you have an IGBT or you can use a MOSFET or whatever. Um, but we will use a MOSFET in terms of simulation. Um, this is not a MOSFET, this is an IGBT just for the overview of the circuit. So this will be the switching device. You'll have a diode and you'll have the boost buck resistance and you'll have a buck capacitance and then you'll have a battery on the other end. And you'll also have a um, uh, control circuit here, MPPT control circuit where IPV and VPV, that's the uh, current, volt, current and voltage of the PV panels that go to the MPPT and you'll get the duty cycle output. And then there is a relational operator block that uh, compares between D and the um, repeating sequence which will give you the switching frequency that you required for your gating pulses. So this is the design of the buck converter and the calculations. The rate of power will choose this to be 213 watts and then the input voltage will be a maximum of 36.3 volts. That's the VOC and then V input will be between 28 to 36 volts. V output will be 12 volts. That's the desired output voltage. And the current ripple will take it as 10% uh, of the current and voltage ripple will be 1%. So these are the formulas to calculate the output current. So output current will be rated power by V. So because power is equal to V into I for a DC system. And you have 213 divided by 12, which is 17.750. And then current ripple is 10% of the output current, which is 1.775 amps. And then voltage ripple is 1% of 12 volts, which is 0.12 volts. And then inductance is V output into v, the, the difference between V input and V output divided by the switching frequency into current ripple into voltage input, which is equal to 12 into 28 minus 12 divided by 5 kilohertz into 1.775 into 28, which is 0 0.8653 millihenry. And for the capacitance, you have current ripple divided by 8 into switching frequency into voltage ripple, which is equal to 1.775 divided by 8 into 500 into 0 0.12, which will give us 369.79 microfarad. So now let's move on to the simulation. So let's take a PV array. We'll need a PV array first because that's what we'll be building our whole system on. Um, just drag and drop it. Yes. So once this is done, we'll need to make it one parallel string and one series string. So make sure that um, your user defined functions are like this only 213.15 maximum power and 60 cells per module open circuit voltage of 36.3 and so on. So once this is done, we will, uh, oh yeah, I'll just show you how to plot and see the maximum power. So this is for 1000 watt per meter square. Um, we'll see for one module at uh, 25 degrees and specified irradiances. So for 1000 watt per meter square, you can see that the maximum power is 213.15 as is user defined. Um, this is something that we will hope to achieve with the maximum power point um, um, algorithm for the buck converter. So now we'll need constant blocks to provide inputs to the similar to the PV array. So this will be a radiance. So your radiance will be 1000 watts per meter square at standard test conditions and temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius. So we'll just make a thousand and we'll name it radiance and 25 and we'll name it temperature as well. So now we'll need a series RLC branch. So you have the load and you have the branch. We'll be taking the branch because you can specify the values in Henry's, Farad's and Ohm's. So for the first one, we will need um, an RC branch. So not a capacitor, not a capacitance branch and not a resistance branch as well, but an RC branch. So we'll give the resistance to be 0 0.001 um, Ohm's. Um, and the capacitance to be 1000 uh, microfarad. Yeah, 
So once this is done, we will need to connect this in parallel with the PV array. So the reason why you usually put a small resistance is because you know, like it's um, you sh you should never connect. See, capacitance can act as a voltage source, and you should never connect two voltage sources directly in parallel. So in ideal conditions as well, the wires that you connect across the PV panel will have some resistance. So now you'll need the MOSFET. So once the MOSFET is done, co connect the diode. Uh, make sure you orient the MOSFETs and the diodes in the correct way. Um, the diode has to be pointing upwards for it to function as a buck converter. You, know, you can check out our other videos on the buck converter. We've done a mathematical modeling. We've done a closed loop control and we've done a normal buck converter as well. Um, connect your series RLC branch. Yeah, so now this will be the inductor. So double click and just make it L. So that we can specify the inductance in Henry. So as we had calculated, it was 0 0.869 Henry, 8653 Henry. And for the capacitance is 1.775 um, microfarad. So we will need another series RLC branch. We'll just copy paste this one and change it to capacitance. Yeah. And um, we'll need a battery. So, um, so a battery, you'll have to turn it around and you'll have to flip it top and bottom because um, you need to connect the positive to the positive to charge the battery. So if you ever wanted to charge a battery in a standalone system when you had to charge a battery and then take it somewhere else and use it, um, this is a circuit that you can build it in hardware as well. So now make sure that you take the same values as I'm putting here. Um, so this is a lithium ion battery, but we will not be using a lithium ion battery. We'll be using a lead acid battery. So we'll have to change it to lead acid and uh, change the nominal voltage to 12 volts. The rated ampere R capacity to um, 100 and initial state of charge to 45 and battery response time to one second. Yeah. So now you go to the discharge parameters and then make sure you unclick and you click on the determine uh, from the nominal pro properties of the battery. So depending on the input you give, it'll change selectively. Now you need a bus selector. So the bus selector, you can measure the parameters that you wish to measure. For instance, SOC, current and voltage. Be sure to select these and delete the um, initial signal values that are provided by the block by default. Um, you'll need display blocks to realize what these things are to see the um, values. And the current, this current is the current that's entering the battery. So you do not have to put a current measurement block in series with the battery. Um, you can just directly measure it because MATLAB allows you to do so. So yes, now you need a bus selector for the PV panel as well, because we will need to be measuring the output voltages of the output voltage and output current of the PV panel for the um, MPPT algorithm. Um, just click on select. And now we'll also need a unit delay block and we'll need go to blocks as well. So before we put the go to block, let's just take unit delay blocks. So now let's take the inherited sample time to be one e power minus four. So, yeah. And uh, one e power minus four on the other thing as well. So 
So let's make it global. And let's name this as IPV. So now we need a power GUI block. Um, make sure it's discrete. And uh, we'll also need this MATLAB function block that I've written the code for. Um, I will pause the code. You can, I would scroll down the code so that you can copy down whatever you require. Yeah, so now once this is done, uh, make sure you had the power GUI block. Um, I cut the video, um, so you'll have to add it, make it discrete and make it, um, make sure you take the correct uh, value for the discrete time. And once this is done, you have, you will need a relational op, you will need the relational operator block that compares it and um, gives you a, a gating pulse to the gate. So you'll have to add a repeating sequence so the repeating sequence, the inputs will be zero and uh, one by 5,000, which will be 0 0.0002 and zero and one. So it will be zero when it's um, zero. And when it's, when time becomes 0 0.0002 seconds, it will be, it will be high. So this will give you a switching frequency of five kilohertz and connect the input to the gating pulse. Uh, give the gating pulse to the input of the MOSFET. So now we'll need a product block so that we can see what the output uh, power is of the so system so that we know that it's operating at maximum power point and at no other point. Yeah, so now we'll um, take the display block and we'll name it as power and now once this is done um we'll also have to Okay, never mind. Let's not go for a signal generator because it'll take time. So yeah, you can add, you can also add a signal generator and generate uh, uh, signals from thousand uh, radians to five hundred radians. But we'll not do that now. Make sure you go to model um, settings and make sure you get that variable step and trapezoidal uh, fit as well. And now we'll run the simulation. And as you can see, that the power is um, slowly climbing in value. It's at one thirty. 135 now and uh, we'll see if it reaches uh, 213 um, watts because that's what the maximum power is and if it does then the algorithm works so now um, yeah so the power is 213 and as you can see that the MPPT algorithm clearly works so and as you can see the battery is also charging so negative current implies that the current is flowing into the battery and the battery is charging and now 500 you will get exactly half the power um, the voltage also drops, but the current is still negative. That means the battery is still charging. So thank you for watching our video. Can you subscribe to our channel? And if it helps you, do um, share with your friends who may benefit from, from the same. Thank you.